today I'm on my floor and the reason for that is because I'm already in full creation mode. I am going to Bristol tomorrow and the last time I went to Bristol I bought this beautiful, I would actually say it's like a tapestry or no not tapestry, what is that? upholstering fabric, a furniture fabric. It's very stiff, it's very thick. You can see that the pattern is woven, so it's not printed, and it's really nice. It reminded me of something that I know is in my grandparents' house, but I don't actually know what it is. I think it's some sort of chair or something this reminds me of. And I saw this, and I knew that it was the perfect fabric to make one of these gorgeous cottage core corsets um, that you're seeing everywhere right now and that's why I bought this and I was super excited when I found it so because I'm going to Bristol again tomorrow I thought I want to wear this when I go there that would be a nice full circle now the crux is I only have a day to make it um, and I also have to work today so I can only make it before work in my lunch break after work and then I still have some time tomorrow morning so it's a bit of a crunch task it's a you know it's a challenge. So I have uh, the shell fabric. I also have this lining fabric that I bought for the Prada pinafore dress that you've seen recently. I also have some interfacing left, which I'm gonna use to reinforce the corset to make it a little stiffer. And to create the pattern for all of this, I'm using my already cut up <laughs> bodice slopers that I like using, you know that. This, you probably don't know what this is, but it's the front. Uh, I'm gonna use this to create the front and I'm gonna show you how now, so let's do this. So this is the front part of the bodice and it looks actually a little something like this. This is actually how it looks. So let me take this back together. I like to use this to create new bodice slopers when I need my darts to be in a different place. So that's why this looks so cut up. So I'm going to trace that probably only the nut lines I actually need. So I need this front line, part of this line, and then I also need part of, or the whole length of this line, like so. And then we place this here and trace the lines that mirror the ones I just drew. Okay, this, and then some side seam. Okay. These are the lines that I need for my sloper. Okay, let me draw a new arm hole first because this is usually an issue. Drawing a new arm hole curve closer to my true shoulder. And then I'm going to make straps that are about four centimeters thick. I think that's gonna look neat. Now, I'm definitely going to already make the whole thing smaller because it's a corset and I know that usually this is what you have to do. So this is my apex of my bust which means we are going to sew a curve here rather than a pointed curve because otherwise we look like Madonna and we don't want that. All right. I'm then going to say for now we can you know we, we're gonna test ourselves in the sewing process to the point that we actually think is good but for now I'm gonna say this is about where I want the neckline to be. And I want the shoulder strap to be a little rounded and I want this corner to be rounded as well. Now, taking my measuring tape, I want to see approximately how long I want my side seam to be. So we say 20 centimeters um, in height, the whole thing. And then I'm gonna extend this line, but to give this a bit of a interest, we're gonna make it pointed in the front like that, like a real medieval corset. So this is on the fold, and this is our princess seam, which means we have part one and part two. And then for the back. This seems to be a little bit of a theme for me at the moment. <laughs> I really like forgetting about my side seam altogether um, in terms of removing it, because it saves you two whole seams. And I feel like that's what I'm going for here as well. So, we need to move in with our shoulder strap by two centimeters. So this is where it starts. And it's supposed to be four centimeters long. So this long. We need to trace the darts. And then we need to trace the center back seam. We are going to extend 
the length of this whole thing here. Then we're going to draw a new armhole curve like we did in the front. So I'm extending this just a little bit. In the back it's supposed to be much more shallow than in the front. Something like this. And then we need to extend this a little bit down. Probably like this. And in the back, we are going to lower quite dramatically, like so. And we're going to give this a curve, like so. So we have center back, center front. This is uh, non-existent, so we have one piece. The center back is coming with eyes. So we have eyes here. We need a flap, though. So the flap is gonna look something like this. I don't actually know what this is called, a flap. Probably not a flat, a flap. <clears throat> okay, uh, yeah, I think that's it. So we have a uh, one, two, three. The pattern is done. And now I need to get to work, <laughs> like the work that pays me. And uh, I'll see you. I'll see you again at lunchtime. All the pieces are interfaced looking good we have the lining ready to go and uh, now we need to assemble the whole thing alrighty I'll assemble the shell first so we can try it and see what changes we need to make because usually there are changes I've got my side part here and this is my center front piece so I'm placing the two pieces right sides touching and then opening this, placing the side part, right sides touching onto the center again. And now I'll give this a few stitches. Okay. Looking good. I like it very much. It looks like there's a good curve around the chest area, which is what I was hoping because the curve looked very subtle, but it's definitely here. Um, I'm also going to now attach the two back pieces. Which one is this here and one is this here. So again, placing them right sides facing with a few pins. I mean, honestly, I'm amazed. This is almost a perfect fit. <laughs> this is really nice. The bust is perfect, and then the back will be good too. I can sense the only thing that happens still, although I changed the armhole curve already. I want this to be lower. I want this to be more comfortable and not sit like on the very outer corner of my shoulder. So I will probably make the strap a little bit more narrow to give the impression that it sits like further in on my shoulder but that's uh that's all i'm gonna do okay so armhole armhole what am i gonna do with you well it's gonna be a little bit wider when we line it so i'm not gonna cut that back i'm just gonna line it and uh, make the seam so that it goes more in here and further down here. I'm not going to cut it back for now. Um, just to be on the safe side because I don't want me ending up with something missing and then regretting that I cut it open. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press the seams open like that and then I'm going to sew together the lining the same way I did the shell. All 
right. So we've got the shell, we've got the lining, and I've got the flap. Those are the pieces that now somehow need to find together in holy matrimony, but I don't yet know how. <laughs> The thing that is pretty clear is that we will have to place the shell and the lining right sides touching like they are right now in order to be able to overturn the whole thing and have a crisp, beautiful edge. The thing that is not quite clear to me yet is how I'm going to close the armhole because I have already closed my seams here. So I think I will have to open those to be able to do that. Yep. That's what I have to do. So I closed those for the sake of trying the whole thing. And now I'm opening it back up to actually be able to line it as well. Right, now I will pin it all together. And what's important to make sure is that the princess seam lines match up and the center front matches up. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this first and then pin the rest. Okay, what is up next? I will now... Do I want to understitch this or no? Okay, for the neckline I'm going to understitch the seam allowance, which means I'm opening this up and then I'm going to very closely to this um, overturned seam here, stitch the lining into the seam allowance of the shell. That's later going to help it to stay down and not like, you know, work itself up and then show um, from the outside. So this looks really nice. I love this look. It looks so clean. So I understitched the seam allowance, which hopefully you can see here. And now I'm going to press the whole thing like so. And then we have a beautifully lined edge here around our neckline. So let's, uh, let's press it. So the neckline is overturned and looks crisp and lovely, as you can see here. We will have to do something similar with the rest of this. As you can see, I've overturned this and now the lining that fit perfectly before uh, looks out on the corners a little bit. That is actually fine because, let me turn this around. In order to line this nicely, the glue came off a little bit of the interfit. Ooh, ooh, what is this? What happened here? <laughs> what is this? This didn't burn. I don't think. You cannot see it. Okay, well, you cannot see it on the outside, which I guess is the most important thing. Well, maybe this did burn a little bit. Ugh, no good. No es bueno. Whatever, making up a language. Okay, well, what's happening now is we have the lining and we face it the other way and match the corners of the lining and the shell so that we have a bit of a we have a bit of tension going on because this tension is then later going to pull the lining inside the piece so we cannot see it from the outside. At least that's the theory. That's how I learned it and I hope it holds true. So you can see we have a bit of a tunnel going on here and I hope that that is uh, what's happening. <laughs> happened here. I'm just glad you cannot see this from the outside. This would have been ugh, very annoying. And then I'm going to continue with this back here. Okay, now sewing all the way around here and then the armhole and the same thing on the other side. turns nicely and doesn't tug or 
warp in any way. Now we have this ugly little beast here, but when we turn this inside out, a beautiful, perfectly lined piece should appear. So I'm just uh, gonna try to do that now. That is great, cool. This looks nice. And now I'll press this to reveal its true shape. Here we go. It's lined. What do you say? You can still see the lining from the outside a little bit where the seam allowance isn't understitched. But hey, we're not gonna let perfectionism get in our way of, you know, having joy and uh, having fun wearing our pieces. So I th also think if I give this just a, another press, it's gonna be good enough. Okay, now I will, I think, close the shoulder seams and then I will turn my attention to the back. Okay, now the shoulder seams are closed. This already looks uh, close to the finishing line. I don't have much time left in my break anymore. So I don't think I'm gonna f finish this now. I think I will do it later. But thinking about closing the waistline, what we definitely need to do is cut back the lining a little bit. As you can see, it's, uh, it's showing from the side. So we have to cut it back a little bit. So we create a bit of tension on the inside so it doesn't show on the outside, but not too much, probably half a centimeter. And then I realized I could close, it, close this entire seam by leaving the sides open and closing those at the very end of the process and then once we've done that we can focus on this uh, flap and the eye closure in the back and i'm gonna leave that for the evening All right, the corset is more or less finished. Now I am going to work on the closing mechanism of it all. And I have this little rectangle here, which is going to become the flap that is going to um, basically be the underlying you know, background for my, what do you call this? Like corset, when it's like tied up, I'm gonna show you. So this flap, is going to be the underlying background for my closing mechanism which is going to be a i don't know what to call this i need to look it up what it's called um, but it's basically like a classic corset that is going to be tied in the back and so i have this beautiful dusty pink velvet ribbon here which i know there's no real pink in here but i somehow think it complements it rather nicely and i also got these eyelets which come with a tool and I need a hammer, which I have somewhere in this house. <laughs> I just need to find it. So what I'm gonna do first is I will um, sew this flap and then we can focus on the eyelets later. So. is actually a bit long. I'm now going to simply, very very simply, place this underneath the outer edge of my actual corset and I'm going to pin this down so we have this flap here and we can then put the eyelets in here. Well, actually, now the last thing, really the last thing to do is to put these eyelets in. 
Ooh, how does it work is the question. I can't do this on my table, I need to do this on the floor. Okay, I've got it. I think I need to cut the hole first and then place the bottom and the top on top of each other, making sure that the thing is coming through the hole. And then I hammer on it, because then that middle part opens up and clasps the outer part. So this is how it's supposed to look. <sighs> I hate, you know, procedures that you do at the very end of a project that could totally ruin it. And that's one of those. <laughs> but we'll do it anyway. Because we're fierce. <laughs> <laughs> 